Hi there folks, today I'm going to be starting the process of giving this steel frame a new lease of life with a new paint job. I'll start by saying that the steel frame itself isn't actually anything special. So it's covered in little things and scratches um, and it was new old stock and it sat at the back of a bike shop for years. And you can see around the chain stays especially, like some really quite deep gouges where it's gone all the way down through to the metal. So a new paint job isn't only going to make it look nice, it's also going to help to protect the steel tubes underneath. When actually choosing what paint to use, I decided in the end to go for Sprayed Up Bike. I've seen some really cool things that people have done with this stuff online. They have a really good range of colours and in the end I decided to go for Greenwich Green, which is a classic British racing green, which should look really nice and classy when done. To top it off, I went for the Kieran Flake top coat range um, and this one with the gold flakes in it, which should add a little bit of bling to the slightly understated green underneath. What I'm aiming for is something that's a bit nice, but not too stealable. Before going near the bike with any paint at all, there's a lot of preparation to be done. To so spread up bike, recommend that you rough up the existing paint job using sandpaper. They don't recommend going down to the bare metal. I suspect in the interest of durability, because the existing paint job will be more durable than whatever comes out of the can. As you can see, I've already been a bit ham-fisted with the sandpaper on this seat stay, so I'm going to have to go over the whole frame with primer just to even it up. Preparing the frame for painting was very simple. It didn't take any fancy or expensive tools and no chemicals were used, just sandpaper and a lot of patience. So Sprayed Up Bike recommend that you just rough up the existing paint job using sandpaper and that provides a good base for the new paint job. So I started off with a 180 grit sandpaper, then moved to a 320, then a 600. And doing it in that order meant that the 180 really munched through the top layer of the paint. 320 then sort of evened out some of the scratches that that left and the 600 just finished off so a nice uniform finish across the whole frame giving this kind of matte effect. So as you can see in some areas I did go through all the way to the base coat where the paint was perhaps thinner. And it is worth saying that with the 180 sandpaper you really do risk going through too much of the paint but in order to combat that, I decided that I was going to reprime the whole frame with some Rust-Oleum primer, which claims to increase the durability of any paint job. So before going near the frame with any paint or primer, you first of all need to make sure it's A, spotlessly clean, and B, that you've plugged up all of the holes, so bottom bracket shell, bottom cage mounts, mech hanger, all that. Otherwise, if you get paint in those threads, you might well struggle to get components back onto the frame. I also had a bit of a problem where I had to wait for the weather to improve. So both the primer and the paint require 10 degrees or more in order to go on. Living in Scotland, that was a bit of a problem, but we did have a few sunny days, so I managed to get on with the job. Overall, I was really pleased with how easily and evenly the primer went on. Across the whole frame, it looked pretty good. There were a few little bits where the paint had run, but nothing that can't be solved with a little bit more sanding. Weather put the brakes on the job for a little bit, but after a few days, the temperature came up enough and I was able to get back on with it. To tell the truth, I was quite nervous actually before I started spraying. I'd never done this before, and you hear all sorts of stories about DIY paint jobs that just turn out nasty. And having seen a few myself, I can well believe that it's easy to do if you're not careful. But I needn't worry, to be honest, because it was an absolute piece of cake. As long as you remember to keep your hand the recommended distance and you keep it moving at all times, you shouldn't have any problems with the dribbling or running. After I got over my fear of doing a crap job, I actually started to really enjoy it and found it really satisfying. Once the paint's had a chance to dry, but not fully cure, you need to go over it with a lint-free cloth or a bit of kitchen roll and just buff it up slightly and that pushes all the paint particles together and toughens the final finish. Unlike a lot of other paint brands, Sprayed Up Bike only recommend that you use one coat of the colour on the frame. A lot of others will say two or even three, but I found that I did have to touch up a few little bits where you could still see the primer, but overall one coat seemed to do a really nice even job across the whole frame. One of the really impressive things about the Sprayed Up Bike paint is that the colour I was expecting was bang on the colour I got, which isn't always the case with paint. So once the whole frame was painted green, it was time to move on to the top coating. Now it's slightly unclear as to how long to wait between the colour and the top coat, but the main colour was said to be cured fully within two hours, so I figured wait two hours and then crack on with the top coat. As usual, a vigorous shape you can before pulling the trigger. 
And it's important to mention here that the Cairn Flake top coat, you need to keep your hand at least 30 centimetres away from the frame at all times. And that's quite a lot further than with a colour coat. The can for the top coat comes plastered in warning labels. So it's really important that you cover your eyes and wear a mask because you don't want to be breathing any of that stuff in. Again, as with the colour coat, the main things to remember are to keep your distance and to keep your hand moving at all times. If you manage to do that, then you shouldn't have any problems with the top coat going on nice and evenly. So unlike the paint, you do need to do a couple of coats of the top coat. Um, and it is stated as being cured within two hours, but it is recommended that you wait 24 hours plus before building the bike, just to give it time to be fully set. Once the paint's fully cured, you can apply the decals. So, I wasn't actually sure whether I was going to use the decals that I had because I thought the black and the green might be a bit odd, but in the end I decided to go for it. And it's a good idea to test it before going for the whole job because there is the risk that the top coat can make the decals pucker or blister. Luckily for me that wasn't the case, so I was able to get on and apply the full lot. Now the whole job, I would say that putting the decals on was the part I enjoyed the least. I just could not get them to go on straight and they were a wee bit squint but I mean for a job in the garage it's not too bad and I think you agree that the end result, the green and the black, does look pretty good. So all the decals are on the frame now and I've gone over them with a layer of the top coat just to keep them in place and luckily there's no blistering or puckering, no dissolving and they are looking like they're meant to be on the frame. The ones on the seat tube, a little bit squint, a little bit out of alignment, but nobody's going to notice, so it doesn't matter. I'm the only person that knows. And overall, I'm really chuffed with how the frames turned out. So having finished the paint and been able to admire it a little bit, I can wholeheartedly recommend Spray Dot Bike if you're looking to do a cheap and easy home DIY paint job. It went on so easily, and I've got no talent on the spray can, so for it to have turned out as it did is pretty miraculous, really. The only question I have is over the durability, because it is quite thin.